Down there, life continues. The traffic is awful, stocks go on trading, and Star Trek is still showing.
Good day to you, grade eight learners. Welcome to today's Natural Sciences lesson brought to you by the Hauteng Department of Education. My name is David Zinkle Liwayo. In our lesson today, we are looking at our life and living. And in particular, we want to look at energy flow in food chains and food webs. So our, our key words there that we have are food chains and food webs, right? So we're saying uh, at the end of the lesson, you should be able to define energy flow, right? I hope you have an idea or a picture in your mind when you hear the term flow, if something is flowing, isn't it, in a system. So we shall see what we are talking about, uh, this concept of energy flow, when it comes to our food webs and our food chains. And then also, uh, we want to analyze what we call energy pyramids. I'll show you typical examples of what we call our energy pyramids. And then also, you should be able to define a food chain and the food web in an ecosystem. I believe this is quite an interesting topic because when we talk about food, it is something that most of us love, isn't it? So I hope we're going to enjoy this lesson the way we enjoy our food, okay? So we'll talk about uh, the food chains and food webs in our, in our ecosystems. And then also we want to describe the food chain and the food web. So these are our objectives uh, for our lesson today. So coming into this lesson, I need you to remember all your previous uh, sections that you covered uh, on the concept of your ecosystem and the feeding relationships, especially when you're talking, to, talking of terms such as a predator and a prey. Remember the predator is the one that does the hunting. You can see there. It is running for its life there, isn't it? Uh, and we're saying, uh, because of the relationship that occurs there between your predator and your prey, there will be what we call our energy flow, right? So we'll talk about that, uh, that energy flow uh, in our lesson today. And then of importance, we're saying, this energy flow occurs in our ecosystems, and you do well to remember your types of ecosystems, okay? Remember we talk of our natural ecosystems and artificial ecosystems. Uh, looking at our natural ecosystems, we can divide them into two there, that is your terrestrial or the ones that are okay on the land. And then we have the aquatic, the ones that okay in water. I believe the word aqua, aqua, we now always, um, familiarize it to, to water. Whenever you hear the word aqua, you know that you're talking about something to do with the water, isn't it? So for our land uh, ecosystems, we have the grasslands. So you can think of the animals that you find on these grasslands. What do they eat? What kind of food do they, do they eat? We'll talk about that in our lesson today. We have the forest uh, ecosystems. Have you ever been to a forest? Think of the creatures that you may find there uh, in, the, in these forests and their feeding relationships, all right? The desert, okay? All those creatures that you find in your, in your desert ecosystems. I, I hope you still remember the topics that you covered there when it comes to your, to your ecosystems. And then we have got the marine ecosystems. Think of the typical uh, creatures that you find there in those water bodies, as well as the fresh water bodies. So our lesson is going to center on these uh, relationships that we have there in our ecosystems, right? I hope you are ready. It's quite an interesting lesson uh, that we have. Now we are going to start with a small baseline activity just to get you geared up and ready for our lesson, right? So for this activity, I'm going to give you four minutes.
Right, uh, welcome back, welcome back. I believe uh, that was an easy exercise. So can you check your solutions as we do the questions together? Now we're saying state the name of an organism that feeds on plants. What do we call those organisms? Remember, we can call them uh, happy bulls. So there we need an umbrella term, isn't it? Don't put a specific name, say caterpillar, a baboon. I can see somebody wrote baboon, chimpanzee, or whatever. We just need uh, the specific word which covers all of these uh, animals, right? And then uh, organisms uh, that eat flesh, that eat meat only. And these, remember, we call them uh, carnivores, you know, typical uh, carnivores, uh, lions, and so many such uh, animals. And then state the relationship between a leopard and a rabbit. At the moment you think of a leopard and a rabbit, you can actually imagine the rabbit running away in front of, of the what? Of the leopard. Okay, and remember we said this one does the hunting, the leopard hunts, and therefore it is a predator. And then we're saying the rabbit, the one that is hunted, is our prey. So that is the relationship that is there between the leopard and our rabbit. And then last but not least, uh, in the relationship between uh, a shark, okay, a shark and the seal, the shark is a what? Which one is the other day? We know that the shark is actually uh, our predator. Right. I believe uh, we got that uh, correct. Right. Now let us proceed to our business for today. Let us start by defining uh, our terms. I need you to master uh, the definitions of these terms. The first one is a food chain or food chains. Okay. Uh, when we're talking of food chains, we're talking of the sequence of transfers of matter and energy in the form of food from organism to organism. So we're going to have uh, typical examples of food chains, right? So we have the transfer of matter or food from one organism to the next, and we call that a food chain. Then we have food webs, okay? Uh, our food webs now, this is a complex network of interconnecting and overlapping food chains. So in other words, our food chains, they make food webs, right? We'll talk about that uh, in a few minutes uh, when we look at them uh, specifically. And we're saying these show the feeding relationships within a community. I hope you still remember that our community is made up of different populations, okay? And water populations, water communities, which then make up uh, our ecosystems. Uh, let's remember those, uh, those uh, terms. And then also, we talk of what we call uh, trophic levels, okay? Uh, which are actually our feeding uh, levels. Uh, we'll look at what we call our energy pyramid uh, also shortly, uh, and we'll explain uh, these terms a little bit uh, further, right? Now, that being said, I'm just going to give you a few, a few seconds for you to take down these definitions. I won't go anywhere, I'll be there. Just a few seconds for you to take down these definitions. Okay, uh, let us proceed. I believe we have taken down these definitions. And then uh, some few more terms that we will talk of. Uh, the first one, we have a producer. I'm sure that we are familiar with this term. And we're saying uh, these are uh, organisms that can actually make their own food, uh, typically the plants. We know plants to be our producers. And then we talk of um, a consumer. These are actually the organisms that obtains food from plants, either directly or indirectly. Okay, so all consumers can eat plants, they can also eat uh, other animals, right? We'll talk about uh, the different types of uh, consumers in our lesson. 
And then we talk of uh, scavengers, uh, animals that feed on dead animals. I believe we have um, uh, different examples of these animals that we know of, right? So these are called uh, scavengers. And then we have decomposers. And we're saying this is actually an organism uh, that breaks down the remains of dead plants and animals, right? So these are the definitions that we want to look at. And again, I'm going to give you just a few more seconds to take down these four definitions. I'm still here, I'm not going anywhere. Right, uh, welcome back, welcome back. Now we want to talk of the flow of energy. And remember when we were talking of the word flow, I want you to have a picture of something that is moving from point A to point B. Think of water that is flowing uh, through a stream, isn't it? It moves from one point uh, to the next. Now we're saying, we're looking at the flow of energy. Um, before we center on it ask yourself why it is important for energy to move in an ecosystem from the sun to the plants from the plants to the animals and the animals they start eating each other and we're saying we'll have that flow of energy why is it important come to think of it if the plants were were to make their own food and then it stays in the plants what will happen to the animals what will happen to us the people if the energy was not to flow, it means life will not be possible in our biosphere. So we need that flow of energy for life to be what? To be possible, isn't it? So we have a flow of energy from the sun, and we're saying this energy is going to be used by our the living organisms in the ecosystem to support all the life processes. Right. So remember. The sun is going to release its energy there, and this energy is going to be used by the plants for the process of photosynthesis. So we have the light energy, which is now going to be stored by the leaves of our, our plants. I want you to follow the directions okay, of the flow of our energy. Look at the direction in which the arrows are going. From the sun, there is our energy going. And then from the plants, there is our energy going to the, what we call the primary consumer. We'll explain more as we go into our lesson there. So the rat is going to eat our plant. So when it eats the plant, the, it is going to gain some energy from, from the plant. When the rat eats the plant, the rat itself is going to be in turn, uh, eaten there by, that is a hawk, okay? Then it eats the, the rat. The rat and our hawk there can also be ate by, by worms or some ants. Okay, so you can actually trace the, the flow of our energy up to our decomposers, right? But as we take a, a stronger look again at that flow of energy, you're going to see there is some energy that is going out. You see those arrows, energy that is going out. Okay, so there is some which is going to flow in what we call our system there, but some is going to be released or lost to the surroundings. And how is that going to be, how is that going to take place? Okay, we can explain it this way. Remember when the animals eat the plants there, they are going to use that energy to support the life processes. We remember our seven life processes. Number one, we have movement. Remember the seven light processes. So you eat something, you get the energy for you to move. All right. So if you use the energy to move and then something happens to you or a lion eats you, the energy that you used to move is not going to be taken by the next organism. Are you taking, are you taking note of that? Let's say it's a rat there, it eats a plant. Okay. When it is running, it is using that energy to move. Okay, so we're saying that energy, in other words, 
is lost, okay? Because it is using it for the life processes, okay? And the hawk there is going to eat what is left of that. It is quite an interesting concept. We'll explain it further as we proceed. But we're saying, remember our seven life processes. Movement. Help me, help me together now as we proceed. We have what else? We have reproduction. Okay. What about the S? That is sensitivity. You still remember all seven life processes? Okay. That is nutrition. Okay. What else? That is our excretion. I believe we, we are now seeing these uh, seven life processes. And then we have uh, respiration and growth. Okay. So we're saying when the energy flows, some of it is going to be passed from plant to animal to consumer to consumer, isn't it? But some of it is not going to flow, as we can see there. Some of it is going to be used for movement, some for reproduction, some for sensitivity, for growth, for respiration. And this kind of energy, we just use the word lost in quotes there. This energy, we say it is what? It is lost. I, I'm putting it in quotes for a reason, right? So this is the kind of energy that does not flow there, but it's going to be to be lost into our into the surroundings or in different ways in our system. Right, let us proceed. Now we're saying now as the energy is flowing there, we get what we call food change. We can construct what we call food change. And we're saying uh, our food chains, they show the feeding relationships between our living organisms, okay? So the energy is going to be passed through our ecosystem along uh, our food chain, starting from, from our producers to, to the consumers. Let's take a look at this uh, interesting chain, I'll call it a food chain, but I'll show you uh, uh, the way that you are expected to write your food chains, right? So we have our sun there, which we say is the ultimate source of our energy. It releases our light energy. And then we have the plants there, which are the producers, right? So the plants, they use the light energy, photosynthesis, okay? And then the animal there is going to come and eat the plant. We say these are happy birds, the animals that eat our plants. So I want you to take note of something. So the energy is flowing, okay, from the sun to the plant. But remember we said some of that energy is going to be used by the plant for growth, for respiration and other things. And then part of it that remains is the one that is going to be eaten by the, by the animal, by the happy bird, right? So take note. Our arrow is pointing towards the direction of flow of energy, right? So the herbivore is going to be eaten by the lion. Our energy is going there. And remember, some of the life processes that we mentioned, there is excretion. So the animals can excrete. We have the waste there, isn't it? It comes out as waste. Some of the energy there is removed as, as waste. The lion eats uh, the herbivore. And the other lion can actually die also, and then it can decompose, and then it will be acted upon by our decomposers. So our food chain is going to show that flow of energy, starting from producers. Right. Let's look at um, a typical uh, food chain. Right. A typical food chain. I want you to pay attention to uh, to this part. Right. So this is our typical food chain. We're saying, think of a chain, just a chain, isn't it? There's a connection, a continuous connection uh, of uh, you can be wires and locking each other, isn't it? So here, it is our flow of our, our energy from the sun, right? So in a typical food chain, you have producers. So if we ask you, to construct a food, a food chain, and you don't start with the producer, then that food chain is wrong. So always start with a 
with a producer. That can be a plant, okay, a green plant. So there is our, our food chain, it starts there. And then we're saying, the plant is going to be ate by something. In this case, it's a grasshopper, right? So now when you're writing your food chain, I've got grass, which I said is my producer. Then you use an arrow, take note of that, okay? Use an arrow pointing towards the direction of flow of energy, right? So the energy is going to be taken from the grass to the, to the grasshopper. In other words, the arrow points on the organism that eats the arrow. Take note of that. If your arrow goes that way, that is wrong, okay? If you tell me that, then you are saying the grass eats the grasshopper. Does that ever happen? So that is wrong. So that is the direction of our arrow. Now, this grasshopper, we have a special name for the group of animals that actually eat our producers. Okay, we call them primary consumers. Okay, so you move from your producer, you go to the primary consumer, right? A typical example being a what? A grasshopper, and we're saying these are animals that eat plants. Then your grasshopper is going to be eaten by, by the frog. Okay, and then we're saying we have a special name for animals in that section again, just like that frog. Okay, remember from primary school, where do you go to? You go to secondary, isn't it? So you have what you call secondary uh, consumers, right? And then from your, pre from your secondary consumer, that is your frog, which is going to be eaten there by uh, your snake, okay? We go to the next class that we call tertiary consumers, right? So primary, secondary, and tertiary consumers, right? So take note, primary consumers, they eat plants. Secondary consumers, they eat primary consumers. And then your tertiary consumers, they eat your secondary uh, consumers, all right? Yeah, that being said, I'm going to give you just a minute for you to take down this information, one minute. Welcome back, welcome back. I hope you managed to copy that information. Right, remember uh, to take part in our lesson uh, through our WhatsApp platform on 079-578-2908. I'll repeat that again, 079-578-2908. Right, let us proceed. So of importance, when you're constructing a food chain, Start with your producer, which can be a plant, like in this case, which is your grass. You should have a primary consumer, secondary, and tertiary uh, consumers. And remember the, the direction of your arrows, right? And then um, <clears throat> let me show you another typical uh, example of a, of, a, of a food chain, right? This is a typical of the marine ecosystem. Remember our marine ecosystem? There you have your producer, right? You should master the skill of identifying a producer. If you are given a food chain, all right? 
how do you identify a producer? Like in this case, maybe you are not familiar with the word phytoplankton, but how do I know it is a producer? Right? A producer, all the arrows, they point away from your producer. Take note of that. It means it is eaten. So if you're given uh, your food chain or your food web, as you shall see, to identify your producer, you see the arrows point away from it. It is the source of food for your food chain. So in this case, we have our phytoplankton, right? Which will be eaten by the krill, uh, the penguin, until we have uh, our seal, right? So that is our producer, primary consumer, secondary consumer, and our tertiary consumer, right? I hope you see how easy it is. So you should be able to generate diff different kinds of your food chains from the different kinds of ecosystems that you know, depending on the feeding relationships, you can observe this is that, this is that, and then you just connect them by the arrows. That is the direction that your energy will flow in your system. Right. Now, that being said, um, let's have a small activity to see how much we have mastered up until this point. Now, for this activity, I'll give you four minutes.
Right, uh, welcome back, welcome back. Remember to post your solutions on 079-578-2908. We'd like to see how much, uh, how you did actually in these, in these questions. Now, let us look at the questions together. We're saying, what can we call this diagram? I believe that is a piece of cake, yeah? That is definitely a food chain. Remember, we were starting there with our producer and so on, isn't it? So the grass, and take note of your directions, of your, of your arrows there, isn't it? And then which organism is our producer? Indeed, it is our plant. So that is uh, the grass. That is our producer. I believe uh, that was easy, right? And then which organisms are the consumers? Okay, the consumers, they depend on our producers, okay? So remember, <clears throat> we have the first one there, we call that our primary. Then that one is our secondary. That one is our tertiary. Tertiary what? The common word is consumer. So all of them there, they are the consumers, the grasshopper, the red, and the old. So these are our, our consumers. I believe we did that uh, with very, very, with relative ease, isn't it? Okay, so primary, secondary, and our tertiary uh, consumers. Now we're saying the red also eats seeds. Okay, we can see the red here is a grasshopper. That is flesh, isn't it? That is meat. Therefore, uh, what do we call the red? Something that eats plants and flesh. Plants and flesh. Remember, we call those uh, omnivores. Okay, so we're saying this is an omnivore, and our reason is because it eats both seeds and animals, or plants and, and animals. Right, I believe uh, that was... I mean, that was fairly done. You can clap hands for yourself. I know you got everything correct. Let us continue. Now we want to talk of what we call trophic levels. An interesting term for the day that you can go around singing about trophic, trophic, isn't it? So we're talking about trophic levels. Now, each stage in, in your food chain, or what we call a food web, which we'll talk about shortly, is called a trophic level okay each stage is called a trophic level right let's look at this typical uh, food chain <clears throat> we start with our producer there in our food chain remember which is our plant okay so the producers represent a stage or a step which we call a trophic level so the producers they fall in what we call the first Trophic level, right? The producers, they get eaten by our primary consumers, which takes us to the next step or stage. And we call that the second trophic level. Is it making sense? From the primary, we go to the secondary, which is the third trophic level. And then last but not least, we have our fourth uh, trophic level there which is our tertiary consumers. So we're saying our energy flows from one trophic level to the next trophic level. And also remember that as our energy flows, we say there is some that is lost in quotes. We say it in quotes for a reason, right? And the reason is, remember we say, our energy can neither be created nor destroyed. Remember the law of conservation of energy. So our energy is always constant so we're saying lost in quotes because it is just being transformed to a different form of, of energy right so take note of this first trophic level our producers second trophic level our primary consumers uh, i think it, it will be easy for you to remember primary secondary these are the stages that you go through even in school primary secondary then tertiary education right so I hope you, you mastered that and was saying we mostly find our herbivores in the primary consumers and most of our carnivores and, and, and omnivores there in the secondary and tertiary uh, section there in the third and the fourth uh, trophic levels. Right. I hope that is, uh, that is clear. Now, 
want to talk about the energy transfer and the energy loss. <clears throat> right. Let's start there in our, what we call our energy pyramid. It's something that I need you to understand. At the bottom there, where we have our producers, we say it, that is the first tropic level, right? Second, uh, third, and fourth, right? We have an energy, what we call an energy pyramid. This shows the amount of energy at each tropic level. It is not just a shape that we want to enjoy, that uh, it's a pyramid, it looks like a triangle for a reason. But that shape is showing us the energy distribution at each level. Right? So we're saying, this one, the first tropic level has a bigger base, showing us there is a lot of energy on the producers. Okay? Then we go to the primary consumers. They have less energy compared to the producers. Are you getting that point? And then we're saying the secondary consumers in turn have less energy compared to the primary consumers. And the ones with the least energy is the tertiary consumers. Right? I hope that is making sense. And we're saying, why is it so? Because we're saying moving from one tropic level to the next, energy is lost in courts some energy is going to be lost, it will not flow to the next tropic level. Are you, are, you, are you taking note of that? All right. And remember we said, where is that energy going? If your red eats the plants there, we're saying some of the energy, it will use it for its life processes. Okay. Even through respiration, it is going to release heat to the surrounding. Through excretion, it will release that energy in the form of waste. So when the snake eats the rat, the rat, it does not consume all the energy that was consumed by the rat. Are you taking note of that? So when you go from one step to the next, we're saying the energy is decreasing. So we represent this using energy pyramids because they are showing us the amount of energy at each level. So energy is decreasing as you go from tropic level tropic level right i hope that makes sense we we're saying as an illustration let's put numbers but these are not actual numbers all right um we're saying suppose we have ten thousand joules there of energy in our primary uh, producers these are our producers we're saying only 10 percent of the energy is going to be transferred to the next tropic level right the plants absorb energy from the sun they say they absorb about 10,000 joules. This is just a, a rough figure. I want you to have a picture of how much will be transferred to the next tropic level. Right. So if the plants, they get, let's say, 10,000 joules, then we say, what is 10% of 10,000? We cancel the zero there. We we'll remain with what? 1,000. It means 1,000 is going to be transferred to the primary consumer. That is what is going to be. That is what is going to flow to the primary consumers, all right? When the primary consumers get a thousand joules, 10% of the thousand is going to be transferred to the next tropic level. What is 10%? 100. It goes to the next. And then 10% of 100, it goes to the next. I hope you can see what is happening. So we're saying there is energy loss at each tropic level. Only 10% of energy that is going to be consumed is going to be taken to the next tropic level. Is that making sense? Right. I hope indeed it is making sense. And hence the reason why we are going to have our pyramid, our energy pyramid. Right. Very interesting, interesting uh, topics that we are looking at. Right. Now, uh, having done that, uh, let us move on to the next activity and see that uh, what we are talking about is really making sense. Now, I'm going to give you this small activity, uh, three minutes for you to work on these questions, three minutes.
Great. Uh, welcome back. Welcome back. I believe you successfully uh, answered those questions without much of a challenge because I believe uh, it is making sense, right? Right. Remember your solutions on 079-578-2908. Right. Let's go over the questions together and see what we can accomplish there. Now we're saying which organisms are the producers? in the marine ecosystem and the savanna ecosystem. Remember, the marine is to do with water. Everything there with the fish, 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 that is our marine ecosystem. How do you identify your producer? They are at the base, where the energy is the most, at the base of your pyramid. Those are your producers. So you can see there, we have got phytoplankton. You can just say plankton, okay? And then there you have your trees, isn't it? These are your producers. I believe uh, that one, we have no issues there. Then we're saying 90% of the energy is lost and only 10% is made available to the next trophic level. Why do you think this happens? Remember, what did we say? Some of the energy is used for the life processes of the, of the consumers, isn't it? So, the organism is going to use up all the 90% of its food for what? For the life processes. Remember we said Mrs. Neck, the seven life processes, movement, reproduction, and so on, excretion, nutrition. It will use it for all those processes. Then only about 10% is going to be used for the new body cells and whatever. And we're saying these body cells are the ones that are available for consumption by a predator. You see that? If a rabbit now grows new cells and whatever, those are the ones that are going to be eaten by the, by the predator, contributing to that 10% low in energy. Right, I hope that makes sense. Okay, now we are going into the last section of our lesson, food web. Think of a spider web, think of a network. You see the spider web, it looks like a net. It's just a network of different uh, uh, things there. So now, when it comes to our food web, again, you can identify your producer there, which is a grass. Then we're saying, we've got different networks. Where are these coming from? They're coming from the fact that uh, the organisms do not have a single source of food. Okay, uh, for example, if you look at the, uh, at the lion, it doesn't only eat the bugs, the bush bark, or other animals. It eats a variety of what? Of animals, right? And because of the existence of the different sources of food, we're saying we can now generate what we call our food web. And you can see the arrows, the different arrows coming from our producer. So we're saying our food web is a connection of different food chains network of food chains okay so these interconnected food chains they generate our food web right i hope that makes sense so your food web is going to show now the interactions that you have uh, between your organism and many other organisms right in other cases uh, the organism is a predator in other cases the same organism becomes the prey you see that in other cases it eats, in other cases it gets eaten. So we see all those interactions in our food web. Right, now looking at a typical food web, if you are given a typical food web, you should be able to come up with different food chains. Right, let me show you how easy it is to generate the food chains. Let's look at that food web. This is typical for our savanna ecosystem, right? Right. So you want to generate food chains from here. The first step, identify your producers, right? We say the producers have got arrows moving away from them. You can check one day, you've got a shrub. It is definitely a producer. You see grass, all the arrows are pointing away from it. So that is a producer. Then you've got a tree. It is also a producer, right? 
you've identified our producers. This is where our um, uh, food chains can start. So the first food chain, I can follow the arrow there. From my shrub, where does my arrow go? It goes to an impala. So you write impala. From an impala, where does it arrow go? It goes to, it goes to a leopard. You see that? You are just following the arrows as long as they are going away from the organism. And the leopard, where does the arrow go? It goes to a vulture. Then I have a food chain. You see how easy it is. So I was saying from the shrub, you just follow that. And then if I go to the grass, the arrows that move from the grass, rhino is one part, grasshopper, another part, that is a different food chain, which can go all the way there. You see that? That's a food chain on its own. Or from the grasshopper, it can go to the baboon leopard. That is a different food chain. Right, then from your tree there, your tree, you can call, follow this pathway to the giraffe. Right, you follow the arrow again from the giraffe, it goes to the, to the lion, you see? So that is how you can generate many food chains from that food web. Okay, so it is showing us the feeding relationships there, which are there in this particular ecosystem. It is showing us the flow of energy, right? Now, that being said, let me give you the last activity for our lesson for today. Right, for this activity, I'm going to give you just about five minutes.
Right, uh, welcome back, welcome back. I believe we are done there. So we're saying, what sort of an ecosystem does this uh, food web describe? You can see all these are marine creatures. So this is a marine uh, ecosystem, isn't it? Right, I believe that was an easy section. And I believe we all got that correct. And then now, write down four different food chains from this food web. Right. Remember the trick we said, identify, first of all, the producers. The producers, they put arrows pointing away. You have seaweed, there, one producer. What else? You have phytoplankton, one producer. So you can choose, starting with your seaweed. Remember we said we use arrows pointing away. So you have a seaweed, then you follow the arrow there, go to a crab. From the crab, you go to a squid. Okay, squid, you can go to an elephant seal. From your elephant seal there, the killer whale. Right, then you have um, a complete food chain there. Right, you can construct as many as possible, but remember we're saying use the arrows, just follow the direction of your of your arrows there. You can see one chain actually follows this pathway. From the squid, it goes to the to the penguin there, right? And then from your penguin, you can go to your to your seal or you can go to your killer whale. Right. So it's all about following your your arrows. Right. So you've got other uh, other ones, other chains that you can actually follow from your phyto the plankton there, which goes to the krill. Okay, from your krill, it can go to your blue whale. Right, or from your krill, it can go to the fish. You see, it's all about following uh, the direction of your arrows. And the trick is there, remember we said, only start by your producer. And we're saying your producers, uh, you see the arrows point away from them. Right, now that being said, this marks the end of our lesson. Remember what we spoke about? We spoke about uh, our food chains, which show us the sequence of the flow of energy in our ecosystems. And to say these food chains, they, they form a, a network of what we call a food chains, which show us uh, the flow of energy in our whole ecosystem. Right, and we're saying the energy transfer is essential so that organisms can carry out their life processes. And remember we said the different stages or steps there in our food chains, we refer to them as tropic levels. Right, now otherwise, uh, that being said, I hope you found the lesson quite informative. Till we meet again, may God bless you.